This is Professor Russell James coming to you from Texas Tech University. Welcome to today's lecture from Visual Plan Giving, an introduction to the law and taxation of charitable gift planning. Welcome to Charitable Gifts of Homes and Farms with Retained Life Estates, Part 3, Advanced Planning Strategies. This is Professor Russell James. For a donor who has intent to leave a bequest gift to charity, a remainder interest gift may be particularly attractive. In both cases, whether through a will or through a remainder deed, the charity receives a gift at death. However, with the remainder interest deed, the donor receives an immediate income tax deduction that can often be very large. This does come at a cost. The primary cost is that the remainder interest gift, unlike a will, is irrevocable. The donor cannot later change his mind and decide to take back the remainder interest gift. Also, to be deductible, a remainder interest gift must be a gift of farmland or a home. Because of typical mortgage prohibitions against transfers, such a gift normally requires debt-free farmland or a debt-free house. Some donors may also be attracted by the reality that a charity can sell the remainder interest and thereby generate immediate cash for current projects. The substantial tax deduction may also benefit the donor by increasing spendable assets, which now do not have to be spent on tax payments. This may be particularly attractive for a donor who does not wish to sell the home or farmland, but wishes to get an immediate monetary benefit from the property in order to supplement current income. As discussed previously, remainder interests in farmland with a retained life estate can be gifted in parts. This can be done either by gifting remainder interests in specific acreage in a farm or by gifting an undivided fractional share interest, uh, for example, 10.72% in specific acreage. Such undivided fractional share gifts are also available for gifts of remainder interests in personal residences with a retained life estate. This can provide the donor with tremendous flexibility. For example, the donor could make a remainder interest gift up to the point at which income giving limitations would result in further deductions being carried forward to future years. Making additional remainder interest gifts in future years may be preferable to carrying forward charitable deductions because, number one, the deduction will, ceteris paribus, be larger as the donor measuring life is one year older. Two, the deduction will be larger if the farmland has appreciated in value. And three, the death of the donor or donor spouse if a joint gift would not result in the loss of carryover deductions. An additional reason for considering a series of remainder interest gifts would be to coordinate the receipt of tax benefits with the offsetting payment of life insurance premiums through an irrevocable life insurance trust known as an islet. Although dealt with in detail in another series of lectures, the basic idea is that the use of life insurance allows the heirs to receive money as a replacement for the value of the home or farmland they will no longer be inheriting. In some cases, the heirs may prefer the life insurance proceeds because life insurance purchased through an islet is not normally subject to estate taxes. However, only a limited amount of money can be used each year to pay premiums of islet-owned policies without generating gift taxes. In 2017, this was $14,000 annually per donee for each donor. Thus, spreading the deductions over a long period of time can help to match with the life insurance premiums paid over several years. This combination of transactions, where a donor gives a remainder interest to a charity and then uses the value of the resulting tax deductions to purchase life insurance not subject to estate taxes, can be very attractive. The heirs lose the ability to inherit the property subject to the gifted remainder interest, but gain the opportunity to inherit life insurance proceeds. Because the home or farmland might have been subject to a 40% estate tax, estate tax-free life insurance proceeds could be particularly attractive. Let's examine the details comparing this type of transaction with less sophisticated charitable planning. 
Let's return to the 59-year-old donor contemplating the disposition of $100,000 of farmland. In this case, suppose the donor is subject to a 40% marginal estate tax rate, a 39.6% federal income tax rate, and a 5% net state income tax rate after considering the effect of the federal income tax deduction for payment of state income taxes. Further, suppose the donor wishes to benefit both the charity and his children at his death with the $100,000 of farmland. A simple, unsophisticated approach would be to draft a will in which part of the farmland, uh, for example 10%, would go to the charity and the rest, for example 90%, would go to the children. Assuming that the property appreciates to $125,000 at the time of death, this would result in the charity receiving $12,500. In other words, 10% of the $125,000 value. The children's share would be 90%, that is 90% of $125,000 or $112,500. But their share is first subject to estate taxes of 40%, leaving a net inheritance of $67,500. Let's compare the results from that simple planning with the use of a remainder interest deed with retained life estate and an islet. A remainder interest gift in $100,000 of farmland by this age 59 donor generates an income tax deduction of $71,057. The value of a deduction depends upon the marginal income tax rate of the taxpayer. In this case, assuming that the donor is at a 39.6% federal income tax rate and a 5% net state income tax rate after considering the value of federal deductions for payment of state taxes, this deduction would be worth $31,691. Using a rough estimate, let's suppose that this money could be used to purchase a $70,000 death benefit paid up life insurance policy. As a side note, the amount of insurance that can be purchased from the remainder interest deduction may be relatively stable in different interest rate environments. A low interest rate causes the deduction to be larger and the insurance to be more expensive, whereas a high interest rate causes the deduction to be smaller and the insurance to be less expensive. At death, the children receive the $70,000 death benefit from the life insurance policy. However, this death benefit, because of the use of the islet, is not subject to estate taxes. So the children receive the entire $70,000. In this case, the children's inheritance is approximately the same with either charitable plan. However, with the use of the remainder interest, the charity receives the entire farmland, not just 10% of it. Thus, through sophisticated planning, the donor is able to give 10 times as much to charity at death without disadvantaging his children. As a side note, it is still critical to engage in charitable planning only for those clients who have charitable interests. There are almost always sophisticated, non-charitable estate planning strategies that are more effective at transferring wealth to heirs as compared with charitable strategies. But for the client who wishes to have a charitable impact, these charitable strategies are powerful. One simple approach to identifying a client's charitable interests is to draw a circle and explain, you can leave your estate to three different groups. People, that's usually family, charity, and government. Divide this circle into a pie chart showing how you would want your estate divided between these three groups. This conversation can quickly identify those who have charitable estate interests and those who do not. Additionally, of use to attorneys and financial advisors is the likelihood that the share assigned to government may be lower than that resulting from estate and gift taxes, thus generating the motivation for exploring sophisticated estate tax planning. To this point, we have been considering gifts of remainder interests with retained life estates in farmland. However, gifts of remainder interests in the donor's personal residence or residences with a retained life estate can also be deducted, although the calculations are a bit more complex. The remainder interest must be in a personal residence of the donor, 
but it need not be the donor's primary residence. Thus, for example, the gift of a remainder interest in a donor's vacation home is deductible. In fact, any home owned by the donor and used by the donor as one of his or her residences will qualify for a deductible remainder interest gift. This can even include a boat with bathroom, cooking, and sleeping facilities if it is actually used by the donor as a residence. This has been Charitable Gifts of Homes and Farms with Retained Life Estates Part 3, Advanced Planning Strategies. Join us next time for Part 4, Calculating the Deduction for a Home.